Tumbleweed Park. I'm a huge fan of the point and click adventure games, the Monkey Island games in particular. So I thought I'd like this game because it's made by the same person. I grew up loving those games. Monkey Island 1 and 2 are still fantastic to play. As I grew up, I found there were very few adventure games that could replicate the fun that I had growing up playing those. The only notable exception to that was the Tex Murphy games, which are still great to play. And if you play the latest one, the Tesla Effect, you're actually going to see me in it. So I guess I'm a little biased on that end. The last point and click adventure game in the vein of this title with like 8-bit graphics and stuff that I played was the Blackwell Legacy game series, which I finished. And while I think the ending was rushed, I think it had a great ending. So if you ever want to play a good ghost story adventure game, go for it. Thimbleweed Park desperately wants to be in the vein of those older LucasArts style adventure games. And I would say it mostly succeeds. Up until the end parts of the game, I would say this was average to good, but not a great adventure game. Once I hit the final part, I would say this game fell off a cliff. I will not spoil the ending, so don't worry. I will be talking in broad generalities. Honestly, the ending to this game might work if it didn't involve the incessant winking at the audience so much. Now I'm sure people are going to write to me. How can you like Monkey Island 2 so much when that game's ending was basically just a finger to the fans? Now to that I say that game's ending made sense in the narrative that they put it in. This game's ending felt like the writers were out drinking one night right before the story was due and they wrote a wouldn't it be funny ending to this game after doing like three shots of Jaeger and never bothered to change it. The game as you play is five different characters. Two agents, a clown, a game programmer, and a ghost. With the exception of the ghost, they all played the same. They each have their own strengths, but most of the time the puzzles can be solved with whoever you want to use. My favorite was the female agent. She seemed tough yet believable. In fact, she was the one I played with most of the time, when the game would let me. The ghost has different verbs that you could choose from, which was kind of fun. You could easily jump between the characters with the push of a button. They let you use the d-pad to scroll through the chat dialogue, and you can use the left and right shoulder buttons to quickly highlight an object that you want to interact with. It was a bit clumsy, but really other than using the touchscreen, which is the best way to play this game, it worked fine. I did like how the game was entirely voice acted, and overall the voices were good. I didn't like the male agent's voice, I just don't think it worked well with his character model. He had this accent that I would often have a hard time understanding. They do try to add a lot of jokes to this title. The clown character in particular, who is constantly being censored because he curses all the time. I never found those jokes even slightly amusing. Constantly cursing for no reason? That just isn't funny. There are quite a few locations, but it's never too overwhelming. There is a map to help you speed things up by fast traveling to a place you want to choose. They also give you a checklist for each of the characters to help you keep track of what you need to do. That was actually very helpful. The problem is those checklists were not chapter specific, so you might be trying to check something off that you can't even do yet until like later in the game. To help you out, you could dial a number whenever you have a phone or see a phone on the screen to call a hint line. They would give you vague hints at first, then it would get more specific, to the point where it would flat out tell you where to go and and what to do. You can call the helpline as many times as you want. Now I really haven't gotten into the story too much, as really the game doesn't do that either. It's not until the back end of this title that we see any real story sections. Sure they do it here and there, but it's mostly about characters backstories than advancing the plot of the game. Basically each of these characters has a reason for being in town, and then they do eventually all have to go to the same place to complete their goal. There is a normal mode or a hard mode which has more puzzles, which is something they also did in Monkey Island 2 to add some replayability. However, the destination is still the same. The way you get there is just a little bit different. If you don't mind that kind of replayability, then you're in for a little bit of luck because you have a little bit more to this game than you thought. I may play the hard mode eventually, but I'm talking about years down the line because I really don't have any urge to play this game again. Thimbleweed Park looked and felt like an old school adventure game. Now, I don't want you to think this is a bad game because it isn't. I can feel the developers really trying and if I could throw a best effort award onto this game, I would. But I really thought this title was, at best, kind of average. I think you should wait for this to go on sale. They're asking almost $20 for this game, and that seems way too high for a game with such minimal replayability and a 68 hour game length. And I would say wait for it to go on sale for about $10.